get it all set up. So making sure I'm mounting it centrally. First of all, just adjusting the post in. Make it nice and compact. And I don't want to get it too tight. Get it just right. When stringing, you may also notice me using a Parnell pad. This is great for protecting the string. In this instance, I also use it to protect the frame because there's no bumper on an eye racket. So I've got the string in the racket. I've measured out how much I need uh, for each end. I'm going to do a UK RSA around the world pattern here. So I'm just going to start off with stretching this. Now I've adjusted the clamps accordingly so they're not too tight, not too loose. Just using that as my for anchor for now. And now I'll pull this one properly. String this racket at 28 pounds. Side which I want to This is going to be the long side. And the other is going to be my short side. So just keeping hold of one end of the string here makes life a little bit easier. Always releasing the clamp base first of all. So the cool thing about these clamps is that they're really nice and thin, which means you've got plenty of room to get as close to the frame as you as you want to really. So I'm not going to string more than three on each side. The reason why I'm doing that, I don't really want to distort the frame at all. So I'm not going right up to the edge of the frame. I'm not trying to block anything in here. Um, this is one of my rackets. So, uh, you know, just having a bit of fun with them and thing. Um, I'm not going to tension this string. I'm just putting it through there just to save a bit of time for later. First thing that I noticed on this machine is that the tension head is really, really smooth. Um, it's not the quietest, but it's quiet enough. Certainly it's a bit quieter than my last wise tension head. That's cool. So these clamps are nice and small so you can get nice enough close to the frame on that. And the string which I'm testing, which I'm stringing with at the moment rather, is actually a test string for a racket manufacturer. So I'm not going to give away the name of who the string is made by, um, just to say that it's not a commonly used string at the moment because it's not even being released. So I'm not going to tension this string. So this is going to be the last main I do for now on the long side. Now, when I clamp it, I'm going to clamp it just here. And there's a reason why I'm clamping it not close to the frame. That's going to do a slightly different string pattern, the UK RSA around the world, which requires a little bit of space, which you'll see in a minute.
So normally on this racket, the natural pattern would be to string seven mains on each side to 14 mains in total. We're only going to string six on this. And for this particular one, what I'm going to use is my clamp and also a Parnell pad. So this is to protect the frame from scratching. So I'm just going to place that there. So now I don't actually need to clamp on this side. So that's starting clamp, just holding that in position. I'm not going to use this string for a little while now because uh, I'm going to string down through the crosses now. So we're not going to go on the main, on the first cross down. We're going to skip to the second cross down. And there's a reason for that it's because uh, we'll be coming up and, and finishing off a bit later on. Shaky fingers. Right, it's a little tip, something which I normally do actually, which I didn't this time, is just to sharpen up the end of the string. This one was a little bit sharp to start with, but it does certainly help um, just to feed things through a little bit better. Obviously protecting the string. Yeah. So stringing one ahead, so I'll tension this one in a minute. It's actually a pretty stretchy string this one this is why i've gone for um 28 pounds on this i normally would go for um around sort of 24 25 pounds on, on mine but i'm going a little bit higher on this one just because it's a very very stretchy elastic string lots of different ways to weave and to be honest i mix it up sometimes i just finger weave sometimes i slide it through First thing I'm noticing with uh, this new machine is that the clamps, um, certainly the base of them, slide really, really nicely actually. Oops, just got my finger caught. So again, as discussed, just string one ahead. And what this allows is for um, just a reduction in friction on the strings. So it just makes it a little bit easier to string. So you're always making sure you tension every single string. But it just does make life a little bit easier. Other Fairly useful tip as well, um, as when, certainly when I'm streaming anyway, try and straighten the crosses as you're going along so you're not left with strings all over the place at the end. So again, not, not an instructional video, just a video of me having a bit of fun streaming with a new machine. Always remembering to release the clamp at the base before the teeth, first of all. Again, the re reason for doing that is just to stop the string from slipping in these as you take it off, because it can affect tension and also 
potentially damage the string as well. So you don't really want to do either of those. So one of the good things about stringing this way, UKRSA method, is that as you've only got 12 mains to go through, it cuts down the time and the crosses as well. But everyone's got different methods of stringing rackets really there's no right there's no wrong obviously there's a few glaring things that you can do incorrectly um, but certainly for this type of racket which is similar to a Tech Fiber Carver Flex in terms of the shape and string pattern um, around the world patterns are pretty much a must it's certainly advisable um, to string the crosses down towards the throat rather than up towards the head um, it's just better for the frame it's best practice really with any racket to make sure that the that the uh, crosses go head to throat so that it just stops the frame from, from deforming too much and certainly that's what as a professional stringer will be taught to do There is a lot of getting used to what a new machine, whenever you string on a different machine, just because clamps will be a bit different. Uh, certainly the posts will be as well. And sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm stringing this with the short side on the traditional side, which is on this side of the racket. Um, quite often I'll string on this side, just because sometimes I find it a bit easier um, with my hands. But having said that, there are certain rackets some of the old Dunlop squash rackets from a few years ago, which would normally require you to have the short side on the other side if you do it correctly because of the way all the clamps and everything are actually done. Sorry, not clamps, rather the grommets and the bumper strips. They've got grooves in them, so you've got to do things the right way around. So this is going to be my last cross using the main string, uh, on using the long side string rather on this one. And I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Like that. tension actually I'm going to leave myself a little bit more space than that so I'm just going to retension it move it along a little bit more the reason being is because I'm now going to come back up here This is where 
sometimes you need to just get one of the balls out just if it's a little bit kind of cramped off. So what you can do, sometimes you can just clamp it off here um, with, with using a starting clamp. I'm not going to at the moment, I'm actually going to thread my final cross string through, which is going to end up on this side, hopefully, or get, do at least most, most of the way. Just to save a little bit of time for later. So we'll pull that a little bit slower through. I don't want to burn the strings because it's not so much room to, to play with. Right, I'm just going to leave that there. That's going to hang vacant. Now the last um, short side string, which I did on that main, on that six main on the short side, I'm now going to tension. So I'm going to take off carefully the clamp on the pad, put it down here. Like this. Clamp in place. So now we're using the short side and we're going to go back down the final main and finish off the short side strings. The um, crosses rather. And so because so I've gone quite close to the frame on there, which you should always do, uh, it's just left a little bit of interference. So that is now all of the main strings in place. And what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to just quickly clamp this string here again using the pad. And this is going to be my final tie off a little bit later on. I'll retension it later too. But for now, I'm going to be finishing off the cross strings down towards the throat. So there's only uh, three left to go now. a slightly more fiddly way of doing it but it's a really good way of swinging a racket correctly. Another advantage of stringing it around the world as well is that you don't get lots of really long loops outside of the frame at the end. So down here and here, as you normally would with this type of racket, which is good. I 
is the less string showing on the outside of a racket, the better, less chance of tension loss and slip. And very, very, very done. So what you can do, you can actually add some extra tension to that last string. Um, normally I wouldn't do though, uh, you don't really need to. And another advantage of doing the around the world pattern as well is that we actually don't, which is a really important thing, we don't actually get um, any side strings which are going to be really loose because they've all been done before these final crosses. So just going to tie this one off. over so I'm going to use a Parnell knot on this one which again is a kind of industry standard so let's use my clamp on here if I can find out where I put my clamp there we go it's on there so I'll use my spare one the reason why there's some string wrapped around this one is I actually use this Pump for a bridge. Right, so I'm going to hold on as I release obviously with the base first of all and then use my snippers just to cut that. Not too long, not too short. So then we've just got the final string here. So the final cross. So we're going to retension it, although we've already tensioned it once, we're just going to retension it again. Make sure we're not losing anything. Actually, on this particular one, just to give myself a little bit of space. I'll do it here. Right, so this string's got quite a lot of length left in it, so I'm just going to trim that. from my hand you don't always need a clamp tennis advisable squash not so much there we go and that's all racket strung um just to finish it off what we do is first of all just clip that the advantage with the parnell knot which i've done on both of these is that you get the knots facing upwards really nice and neat nice and tidy um, just going to use the setting off all now just to straighten the strings up a little bit. Quite important actually to straighten the strings after you first strike, just restring a racket. The reason why is that otherwise the strings will notch, and then especially the likes of technofiber, so they'll just notch and you'll forever have strings out of place otherwise. finicky about this and also just making sure that all of the side strings all the main strings rather nice and straight starting off each side spinning around and then going around the other way there you go so let's take the racket off my first racket strung on my new machine.